阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming for another session in、uh, Treatise on Response and Retributions.、Um, so we're going to continue where we were last time.、Uh, we had a good discussion. I recall with、um, uh, Jenny was here,、uh, Maggie was here, and Alison. Uh, we talk about the,、um, uh, you know, the knowing what is fault and changing it, and the knowing what is good for us, and actually cultivate, you know, earnestly to,、um, uh, to do good. So today we are gonna do a little bit of summary because it's been a while, two weeks, and we'll go to a new sentence. So we'll take it slow and、uh, nice and easy today. It's New Year, right?、Um, So this is part three.、Uh, if you recall, we have three sections. The first section is about whole whole book. You know, the whole book is about you reap what you sow, and this thing comes to you like the、um, shadow follows you, your body. You can't shake it off. You it will be exact measurement, exact size, the way you ex、uh, the way you are. So you know what we put in, we get the same amount, and、um, that's the concept of karma. And、then we go to the second part and talk about merits. You know the benefits. And the, what's the what's the good、uh, come out of doing good of doing you know if of being a person who able to generate positive karma and what is the result of positive karma.、Uh, it all starts with genuine heart、uh, sincerities and you know being、um, loving and respect towards your、um, yeah your parents and your. Uh, families starts from home, and then you extend it outwards.、Uh, the way you treat people, the way you work, your ethics, your ethics, your、um, uh, the way you position yourself outside in the world, and、uh, how you carry yourself、uh, in variety of situations, and、um, they will list out all the merits.、Uh, you know, if you can, you know, put yourself, hold yourself together, and able to,、um, you know, cultivate.、Um, Uh, sincerity and genuine heart in these situations,、uh, from home all the way to work, all the way to the whole nation, to the whole world,、um, and, and depending on where you are, who you are, and what position you are in,、um, it's all applicable. It can be used in、uh, every situation. Every situation is a moment for you to create, make or break. Put it that way, make or break. You know,、um, and this comes by daily consistent effort. Uh, start from home. Start from you know. Start from you, the person close to you. I guess is the most、um, how to say. You cannot use your word. It's beyond word. I mean, it's, the closer you are, the less a word is required. You know, because the only word can do is abstract concepts, and the actual thing that gives meaning to words is your actions, your your actual expressions, your actions, day to day. Those are the real thing that、um, people will see. And actually affected them. Words will only affect them when you put meaning, imbue soul or imbue. I put it artistic way. Imbue, imbue soul, energy into that word. Meaning your actions, your actual cultivations, your actual crystallization of your wisdom, your thoughts inside these words. Only then your word will move people, or your word will convince people.、Um, hence, creating positive feedback, which is the the other way of saying good karma. All、right, your reputations, your standings, your own state of mind—it's healthier. It's you know loving. It's always caring. It's always balanced as well, and you know know、uh, with wisdom. So all these came out from sincerities, and and sincerity、uh, came out from home. You know how you treat people close to you, and you extend it outwards. That's the、um, crux of our、uh, system, you know, especially the way we teach. In Chinese culture, in East Asian culture, you know, and I think pretty much the rest of the world they also talk about you know how important 
it, it is to have a good family education before you go outwards. Um, then we talk about the meat of this book because this book is more on a precautionary set, say, uh, a system, right? It talks about what not to do because the cost is too high. So that's, that's the approach I'm going to take, you know, the consequences, the cost of doing that, of transgression is too high. So that, and the benefit of not doing that, of not transgressing is too good to miss. I think that's the kind of mindset we can have uh, in a practical way to understand this book instead of taking it too literally. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can't take it literally because this is from a sage, people who are enlightened and understand uh, you know, we'll walk the path that we want, uh, we've been walking through, just, just in a different era, different time, doesn't mean that it's rendered obsolete, right? Um, in these cases, it can be applied from daily into the, you know, as high as the presidents, the kings, or the CEO, the most powerful person in the world, uh, can be on, can be any gender, can be any situation, any cultures. That's the stance I'm taking in this, um, not taking, that's the perspective I'm going, I'm trying to open up for people who, you know, listen to this. So section three, crimes and offenses, um, to ease up the way we read it. Otherwise, it's just going to be like reading law articles and it's going to be one by one. So they group up into different parts under this section three. So section three talks about what are the common mistakes made by different groups of people. You know, most likely made by different groups of people. It can be made by anyone. Uh, this kind of mistakes, sometimes a crime, offenses in a karmic way. But to ease up, to make it easier for us to understand and read and remember as well, the group, um, uh, the commentaries, you know, the people, you know, take this book, take the verse out and then group up in the different chapters so that you can understand, so that we can all understand um, this, uh, process. Yeah. So first one is just general treacherous deeds. You know, pain is uh, basically against your better nature, against your uh, decent nature. And the second one is about um, people with power. You know, people with authority. The most obvious would be in controlling the you know the, the three separate branch of government, legal system. Uh, you know, um, the uh, reinforcements, police, and all that, and the uh, and the government of the day. So bribery and all that. We already talked about that. Um, so today we're going to continue with the part three, transgression of the common people. That means everyday, you know, everyday people like us, we uh, those kind of mistakes easily uh, committed by us, hence creating more miseries instead of more fortune that we would hope for. So to avoid misery, we should avoid that. It sounds, the way I explain it is straight line, but obviously put it in the daily life practice, it takes um, uh, more reflection. So as per your circumstance. So this first sentence of the part three, transgression of the common people or, you know, the mistakes made by the common people, everyone, everyday people. First thing is failing to make reasonable efforts to correct one's faults. Second part is to know good deeds, but refuse to do them. So I, I took the whole chapter last I mean, whole time, whole section, uh, session last week, just to talk about this because uh, we cannot emphasize enough the importance to know before we act because otherwise it's just blind, shot in the dark. Um, we don't know what we're looking for. We don't know what goes wrong. And we don't know that we did the mistakes and hence we can't change it. And we might repeat the same mistake again and again, creating the same results again and again and suffer the same misery again and again. And that's why we have these teachings here. No matter what era it is, no matter what belief or lack of belief it is, you know, people want to seek a way out. Sometimes erroneously, hence causing more misery. Sometimes, you know, they stumble upon something relatively useful to their circumstance, hence achieve a certain level of happiness, but, you know, or lack of misery, but not enough. Sometimes people really stumble upon the gold and their attitude is correct. They accept everything. They met someone who actually is capable of helping, of pointing out the mistakes. And this person who stumbled upon it, able to accept the teachings, able to accept the, uh, in, the in our modern terms, criticisms, and uh, you know, able to accept people pointing fault at you and able to change it earnestly. 
you know, it might not be the smartest um, block in the wood, uh, but uh, able to, you know, day to day putting effort to sharpen your senses, sharpen your, um, uh, how to say, your awareness and able to put in effort to change it and actually improve it. Hence, end up great fortunes, great ending, you know. Uh, and then we can scale up from the daily, day-to-day -day people, day-to-day -day fortune, as in, you know, you things goes well in your life, in your circle, in into some unexpected, you know, increased of your um, spiritual, physical, and mental life. Um, and our goal is to achieve all three, right? One cannot exist without the other two. Um, that's That should be the way uh, of nowadays, especially nowadays. So first, we talk about what kind of know that we need to have, what kind of knowledge we need to equip ourselves. Master Ching Kong has break into three sections, um, and I love it. I love it. I love how systematic he is in his talk, and I can't wait to share again. I know this has been talked last time, but the most obvious, most impactful, most easiest way to touch into this, you know, vast understanding, vast domain of, you know, knowledge and to talk, convert knowledge which is what you know just memorizing into a wisdom able to use what you know in a variety of situation hence achieving the most optimal the best result that you could in your life or people around you first thing is beneficial cost benefit and analysis basically what is li what is high what is beneficial what is harmful that's the most easiest one what is harmful to you? What is beneficial to you? Um, please bear with me. Just like if you can sweep a whole room of floor, people pay you $1 million and say, if you can sweep the floor into a squeaky clean situation, everyone will just do it earnestly without thinking, you know, they are, you know, their time out of stuff because they know the benefit is there. Obviously, this is a very crude way of saying it. And, and, and the other one is what is harmful. If there's a cliff in front of you, you know for sure you will die if you jump or rush ahead. Yet in real life, there's so many things that are not straightforward and people would rush ahead not knowing what's happening to them and only realize it when they're already in the free fall status. Uh, sometimes it's hard to climb back up once you felt. Same goes of benefits. Some people think this is mundane, this is boring, this is um, you know not worth the time because they don't know what is beneficial about this. Why do we go to the temple? Why do we chant Amito for all the time while people are having fun uh, in the pubs and parties and all that? What's the whole point of doing that, right? Obviously, there are different levels, different qualities of cultivation that depends on the state of your mind. But more or less, is to cultivate our ability to, you know, um, have a more calmer, peaceful um, state of mind, and you know, not getting stirred up too easily. That's the whole point of us going there to cultivate dingli, to cultivate patience, to cultivate um, you know, like sitting here two hours, three hours, four hours um, in a session. All right? It's unimaginable for some people who will never experience this. But once you experience through the the, the the struggle of you know sitting in the session two, three hours straight, once you experience the benefits of doing this, which is that joy that you get from. We call it Dharma Joy, Farsi. Basically, the, the real benefit, like it comes from inside. It does not need stimuli. It does not need good music. Does not need good looks. Does not need good taste. Does not need good smell. Does not need anything. It it comes out from inside, and it it, it just fills you with that contentment and peace, you know. And and if you can replicate it again and again, and even more and more, that means you already achieved the real benefits of this um, cultivation. Uh, that the Petra have set up for us. So this is how we know. And once we know what is beneficial, what is harmful, who won't change their behavior? Just like I say, you would clean up the whole floor, whole room if people give you $1 million for that. That's as, as simple as that. Obviously, in real life, we don't do that. This is transactional and it's not realistic, but this is just a you know metaphor. Um, so to, to, to elevate this understanding, Level two would be uh, what is right, what is wrong, what is evil, what is good, what is true, what is false. A bit more, take more time to think about. It's not straight line, right? But still need to be sorted out. Because to operate in the world, you still need to have a certain standards. 
degree of understanding um, on feeling the nature of the nature of the work you're in and the nature of the people you're dealing with, even closest to you, even furthest from you, it doesn't matter. It, everyone needs to have a certain standard and they need to agree on a certain standard in order to operate properly, functionally. And if that standard is in clash, how do we reconcile it? What's the point of reconciliation? So this kind of fault, you know, correct the fault and do the good. If we have a certain level of common consensus in the society, what is right, what is wrong, what is evil, what is good, what is true, what is false, you know, it crystallizes in many forms. Some people call it religion. Some people call it just ethics. Some people call it just a human decency. Doesn't matter. All right. All this thing is needed because you need to operate in a society where everyone needs to agree to the same rule. And hence, we need to agree to the same definition to a certain extent. All right. You don't kill people for no reason. It's very easy, straightforward. You don't steal people's property without their consent. That's easy. That's straightforward. You don't lie in the face of evidence and the face of truth, especially in, you don't lie incessantly, you know, uh, especially you know, trying to, even nowadays we can say, oh yeah, if you get, if you don't get caught, you can get away with it. But, you know, genuine person, you know, we can feel it, we can see it. And if you are not genuine, no matter how successful you are, those things are like a uh, sand castle, it will fall apart because nothing is built on the concrete area. Everything is forced. So all it takes is one fire to lit all this paper up. In Chinese, there's a saying, the real goal does not fear the fire. If you're made of real goal, hence you need to overcome the thousands of years of crystallization and going through all that painful process. But that's what made you a real person. I'm not saying that we should enjoy the pain, but it's part of the process. It's always like that. It's, this is how the world works. Um, and understand you know, uh, being genuine, being true, full is good. And no matter the benefit, how good the benefit is in the front at the short term uh, gain, the long term gain is always outrun the short term. And it all it takes, which is not easy, is patience, is farsightedness, able to also um, be rooted in reality, in understanding uh, like nothing falls free from the sky. Everything is cost, everything has a cost. In karma, another concept we need to have is that if you look from Buddha's story, all right, which I will commence on February next year, talk about that. Why we have Buddha's story? Because he talks about everything he met, his student, his wife before he was a monk, right? his own son, Rahula, his own uncles, his own cousins, his own students, the brightest students of his, the um, also the uh, most naughty and most disobeying disobedient student which is devadatta of him all this thing has their own past has the root in the past lives not life lives right and hence this this is a very broad understanding so once you understand that you know everything has its precedence and hence it has its own future then we will able to um you know settle down a bit be not not as agitated as 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 Juan de Juan said, not as um, yeah, uh, to to pay impatient with that, uh, you know, if you sow the right seed, you would get the right thing. So in understanding all this, um, it helps us to cultivate ourselves uh, by correcting our adjust uh, adjust our course of actions in our thoughts and our speech and our especially thoughts. Okay, everything starts from psychology, from inside. You have to work it through inside before you react outside. You know, it's so once you get that the king you know, of your being, which is your thought, then the rest is just mechanical. It's just repetition, mechanical. Uh, yeah. So knowing what is right, what is wrong, what is evil, what is good, what is true, what is false. All right. Uh, in the context of everyday life, it's um, it, it does not require you to sit down and overthink, philosophize. You just need to know what line you need to draw. What is the consensus? What's the standards? applicable in, in current life. Just like I say, the no killing, no stealing, no lying, and then especially no sexual misconduct. Um, that one is, I already mentioned last two sessions about this. You know, if you want the good thing, all right, it has to wait. 
if you rush it forward and unwrap the gift prematurely, the the, the cost is you're gonna regret it, but you already wrap in it. Um, there's no basis of happiness on that. You know, the only basis of happiness is you're able to um, be careful, understand, and uh, able to how to say wait until the right moment to do it with the blessings of you know, all families and your friends. You know, the last thing you want is getting yourself through this muddy relationship mess and you know getting uh, hooked with the wrong person. And yeah, so everything has its own time. Right? You don't pluck a fruit prematurely when it's not ripe. And because all you get is just hard, sour uh, products. You know, there's nothing good in it. Nothing joyful in it. It's just fulfilling our short-term, short-sightedness. Uh, and then what we exchange for is a long, long, painful life. Uh, it's stuck with the person you're not. Uh, you don't think uh, that you never thought that person could do. You know, like you start with a person that you thought you were right, the Mr. Right or Miss Right, and then end up not the person. So always allow your rational part drive that urge, which is hard, but um, that's why we're cultivating. That's why we do all this, you know, cram as many um, understanding as this in the, into us until it becomes our second nature. Uh, then, yeah. So the last one is the last one is a what is real and what is illusory, right? That one is a level of um, how to say. Um, this is what we talk about in the Mahayana Sutra. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. Hey. So we're just gonna continue what we talk about last session. Uh, it's just like a summary. Uh, it bears repeating. It's actually taking more than one session to actually go in depth. Um, so we're just going to talk about what to know what is right, what is wrong. You know, like why why people repeat the mistakes all the time, and why people knowing the good deeds but refuse to do them. Uh, like you know, knowing what is right but not doing it, knowing that it's wrong but we still do it. Um, and there's three levels: beneficial and harm, which is the most direct way to understand to 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 change our behavior, um, and then to go deeper insight to our psyche, our mentality is what is right, what is wrong, the, the morals, you know, the evil and good, true and false. Or people can use a lot of words, ethics, morals, religion. And then the last one is the reality. Call it the high science, the high philosophy uh, that goes beyond everything. All right, all the labels and all that. What is real? What is illusory? That's the domain of the, um, the enlightened ones. Like what we don't draw lines, we also can do that in in our own life. Like what Buddha say about you know um, what is the real cause of suffering? What's the um, uh, how to say? What is the, no noble if about the four noble truths? Suffering, cause of suffering, the elimination of suffering, and the status after you eliminate the suffering, nirvana. And and in our daily context. You know, in long run, you know all this. Call it rat race. You know, going towards climbing the ladders and all that, getting better and better status and location. That's fine. We're all doing that, but we also need to know it. Um, what is really matters in long run, and what you know doesn't really matter in long run, and what what is temporary, what is something we can use now, just be, just to get by. Something we can cut off, cut down with in terms of time and money and and, and and energy. And what's something we need to gradually, if we cannot accept it in one go, to divert our energy towards, you know. Um, in the in the day-to-day -day context, we talk about um, you know, education against um, something like, you know, you spend on splurge a lot of money on something short term like entertainment and stuff like that. And so what is the long run, right? The long run is you have good education, hence you're able to have better life, uh, better understanding. Um, your The lifestyle will, will enhance. And, and, and instead of spending a lot of money on something that are short term and only momentarily, we're able to hold back and able to put forward into courses, into something 
um, something that will you know elevate the state of being. Uh, for example, just attending like Dharma talk from the venerables, or you know putting invest yourself in the course, right? It's um, to to learn new stuff, new skill, and also meet you know to 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 plant yourself into a better platform. Uh, that's how you advance your your career, advance your life. That's a long term thinking. So in that context, what is real is investing something that can do the longer gain in the long run, like educations, like connect networking connections. And what is illusory in that context is something short term, one off. Not saying that you shouldn't, but we shouldn't put too much energy, money, and time in it, like. You know, entertainment like in my case, game, or sitting there just uh, watching TikToks, watching YouTube incessantly, spending all my energy draining from there. Instead of that, I can dive into something I want to um, create, something bigger or something more. Uh, how to say, long term? You know, a career, a skill set, networking, knowing the right people. Also, in this situation, spiritual. Practice, which I regrettably haven't dived too much. Also, this is something um, interconnected to everything. So, like this spiritual learning, it's not just about sitting in meditation and Om, which is a stereotype we have, right? But it's all about being a person who is fully awakened, what we aim to be, and a person who fully awakened understand what is right, what is wrong. Why? Because they understand what is benefit, what is really beneficial, what is really harmful. All right, really harmful in long run is to create a negative action, thoughts and thoughts. What is negative? Negative in the context of something that is um, harmful to yourself, to the people around you, and to the society around you. All right, and and people who mess up with the priorities will tend to think, if I can benefit myself at the expense of others, there's no such thing. All right, because just because you cannot see beyond time, or be, you cannot see beyond this short temporal. 70 years or 80, give you 100 years of life. Does not mean there's no consequences. That's very short-sighted and also very unscientific. What we need to know is once we understand this whole system in our brain, we will be up uploading this system in our brain, in our psyche, in our consciousness, then our mode of operation is much more steady, much more calm, much more directed. We're able to see what we really want at the moment. All right, I might not be able to, you know, understand the reality that the Buddha has understand. All right, I can only understand the reality that I'm currently in, which is illusory in this larger scales. Right? What? Who are we compared to the world, to the, you know, to, to the global situation, and who are the global situation, which is the small little balls compared to the solar system? Who are the solar system compared to the huge? Milky Way, something like that. So understanding this puts us in perspective. And then we go back to what is beneficial and what is harmful. And then we start to think, OK, cool. We need to have good good life. We need, we need income. We need education. We need a proper relationship, first with our own family, and then your own family, as well, with our family that we're born with, and to the family that we, you will build, your spouse. And then the second thing is your colleagues, your co-workers. We're talking about five relationships now. You know, because all this reasonable effort to correct one fault and good deeds to do, it's in relation to other people, isn't it? It's not just yourself, right? You say, what, what, what fault do we have? We bribe, means we steal people from other people. Or we saying words that we don't mean, which is very uh, harmful. Uh, because we can't control our anger, which is arise from ignorance, arise from uh, wombing, which is uh, arise from just pure, let's say, it's illusory, arise from that impulse, the impulse, and then we indulge in that impulse, and then we use that, we follow the impulse rather than our rational self, which is fully awakened person, personality. We follow that impulse, and then we say words that actually harms other people instead of enhancing them, stuff like that. And and the result is you will get harm back. You will also get the same dose of medicine that you put into others. And this bad cycle continues. 
and the folds getting deeper and worse and worse. All right, it can go from individual to generation or to era, epoch. Like this, this is a Dharma ending age because the habits getting worse and worse and worse. And this is the Dharma age of the beginning age because everyone are purer, cleaner. Their mind is cleaner. They're able to settle down easier. They are less impulsive. They are more able to, um, how to say, that also their environment is less complicated, simpler times, lesser material advancement, hence lesser desires. Uh, what can they desire more than having a land and houses? How many people can be lords and kings, right? Nowadays, every most almost everyone can, more people can do that. That means more desires, more options for you to desire upon. Back then, there's only like one or two people. There's only there can only be one king in this large piece of land. How many lords can be? Are you you have to be born to be a cousin or whatever to the royal family, and the rest of you just do our lords, get by. But despite this deficiency or lack of upward mobility, we also have the yeah, perfect environment to cultivate a more simpler and purer sense of style. The community is tighter and stuff like that. So those are outside. But what we can do now is not sit there and say, ah, oh, back then was like that. Ah, oh, back then it was like that. That's the mentality we need to form as well. We understand what is really good and we understand the Guren is really like, like able to cultivate that because of many factors. Us, we have the same quality, right? We need to understand that we are not, how to say, lesser, right? It's just we are deal with a harder question more complex question. Back then you can say I am a male, he's a female. Nowadays you need to be careful. I identify as a helicopter, something like that. <laughs> so so these are these are the these are not wrong or right. This is just how it is. This is the state of the, the collective mindset. They move towards that. So so what we what we can do in here is always put our sight on what is eternal, what is always correct. You know, be kind be truthful, right? Do not um, harm. No, the precept of no killing involves do not harm, all right? Mentally, verbally, not just physically killing. That's obvious, right? So we use the five precepts to help us to navigate this. And no stealing also means don't take people's stuff without their consent, all right? Of course, you can be, you know, understand that this is a close person to you and you don't need to ask permission every time, but always, you know, just in case, just give them a heads up. No one likes, no one dislikes a polite person. No one dislikes uh, a person who really, you know, be considerate. All right. So, Lido All right. So, uh, nothing wrong with a bit of, um, a little bit of politeness, no matter how close it is. And, um, and then no sexual misconduct. That means you don't do things outside your marriage, you don't do things before your marriage, you don't do things that will harm you in long run. Ultimately, it's about you know, benefit or, 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 or harmful. Um, nowadays, we have no right to say whatever, but I have, all I can do is just giving a pointer. All right? This is the stance all right, uh, to be taken if we are to cultivate earnestly this uh, path and to have a happy long life, we need to be more um, able to control our impulse better um, so that you can give longer benefit, hence last more, more lasting happiness instead of just short-term excitement. It's good to have excitement, but keep it in, you know, keep it, keep it in, in, in tow, you know, like, you know, know when the, the, know when the party should be over and know when to have a party. It's important to have both. You can't just always tense up like that. All right. You can see all the venerables, they don't act like very tense up, especially accomplished one. They're very relaxed. And they might even, you know, give you a few jokes or anything. Or little uh they give give you know little care about overthinking. They don't overthink. They are they just being a truth the truest person you could see. The, the, the best cultivated person is like that. They just, it is what it is. You know, they are very straightforward. Like, you know, they don't, they don't overthink. They don't complicate things. They make complicated things simpler. So I don't want to go too far on that. Um, so that's what we talk about that. 
um, understanding this helps us to 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 go back to this question. You know, what should I do now? This whole thing is about what should I do now? Um, how do I better uh, the good and avoid the bad? Because this bad is harmful to me. This good is beneficial to me. And me cannot be just Dylan. Me cannot be just one person. You can't do that because if Dylan wants to survive, Dylan needs food. Dylan needs shelter. Dylan needs, if Dylan wants to go beyond surviving, Dylan needs companionship, needs friend. And, and this thing relies on other people. All right. So when you say me, it's always in relation to other people. Right. That's one thing about selfishness is people are so short-sighted they can't see, you know, bite the hand that fits you, or um, uh, you know, unable to realize the importance of having proper, uh, a healthy relationship, first with your family and then with your spouse, then with your coworker, with your temple friends, with your other friends, and with whatever circle you have, you know, and 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 um, hence when we think about beneficial and harm. We always need to expand it. Otherwise, what we get is very little. Um, I'm just like giving a bit of a, a two cents on this. Um, once we're able to think that whatever we do, whatever we say, it will be truthful and also beneficial to first to yourself, because you're the one who say it, and then to the people who receive the words or the seeing your action, they also be inspired and also do good for themselves and people around them. So in that essence, what is real is, if you go really deep, is you know, obviously I'm, I can't realize that yet in actual mindset, but what I tell, what I learned from the sutra is, you know, who is them, who is us, right? Um, like if we say us, it's always in relation to them. If we say fault, it's always in relation to uh, merit. And so when we talk about fault, we need to think about what is the merit. And then we are more we are more motivated to correct the fault. What is the good coming out of not having the fault? Yeah, right? The fault of um, excessive um, gaming or excessive uh, idling, which is just wandering thoughts, spending too much energy overthinking. Is I've wasted so much time I could have spent better, say meditate or spend time on learning new stuff, learning courses, spend time on having quality uh, dinner with my siblings, with my family, with my temple friends, or going to temple and listen to Tai Lao's speech. Yeah. Stop overthinking and just do it. And then when something's wrong comes up, that's actual material problem, then you start fixing it. Then you start to have a homework because you have an object against you. So now you can start seeing yourself. Oh, I'm getting agitated. Okay, that's the wrong. That's something to work on. If there's nothing else, then we always cultivate a peaceful mind. If there's something comes out, we need to see ourselves, how we react to this. That's the, that's the basic equipment we need to have, mental equipment. And then we can start enhancing our skillfulness in dealing with it. First, I get very pissed. I get swear. I, I, I react excessively. And then next time similar situation happens, say road rage or something, I do not swear. I less swearing. I do not react aggressively. Now I analyze this person might have some issues. And then third time I encounter the same issues, I, I was unmoved or I'm trying to help the other person. Are you all right? Are you okay? Instead of Busy worry about your your emotion or busy um, caught up in that. I'm liberated from this. My 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 space is bigger. Like my mental space is bigger. I can do more stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway. So this one is the second section. Um, it's related to what I said, um, to blame one own misconduct and crimes on others, right? Um, take ownership, right? Taking ownership of your own mistakes and also acknowledging goods that you did. It's very important, right? No human is one side. There's never, never been in the history of mankind 
or humankind that everyone is, you know, completely bad or completely good. Um, if you look at history of humankind, even the sages who are are perfect, they have to appear imperfect in our world. That's how the, it is. But just by their lifespan, lifespan. If you're perfect, your lifespan should be endless. You shouldn't have a 80 years old, 79 years old. That's already an indication of imperfection. The time is pushing against you. Um, that means that um, we should understand that uh, you know it's okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay to push your mistake onto other people and to frame them. That is worsening your own condition. You know, making mistake is already an indication of the first sentence, unable to know where you go wrong, um, where you do wrong. So hence, we need to um, quickly fix, patch up the leak so that it will function properly better next time. But to blame it on other people means that we ignore the mistake we have, or even worse, knowingly blind to our mistake, or even worse than that is not thinking it's a mistake. It's very hard to deal with people who does not know where it goes wrong and still think they are right. All right. It's easier to deal with people who really don't know and who are willing to learn, willing to change. All right. And and it's very hard to deal with a person who, you know, knowing is bad, but they still like ignore it or they literally have no idea and they're still not accepting it. It's it's like seeing someone sinking and you say, you just need to grab that floating wood. And what that person is, no, I can swim. Yeah, I can do fine. Like you know, I'm not sink. Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. And and until they're actually sinking, you watching them drown. You know, what can you do? So never like it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have some mischievous deeds. You know, sometimes you get you know a bit bored and we do something stupid or say something stupid. Um, and sometimes it's not okay. The things that we do, we need to pay for it, like crimes, maybe, you know, you key someone's car or something, I don't know, or um, you do something um, out of your negligence in your work, maybe you forgot a single digit when you're doing the payment. Uh, I'm sorry, man, I, please feel free to chip in anytime to give a more concrete example, real life example. Um, but never, never ever escape from it. You cannot escape from this. Um, what goes around comes around. Right, it might not fall upon you. It might fall upon the person you like the most: your children, your wife, your husband, your parents. Karma always affects things around you, because you always happen in relation to other people. It's it's both an individual and also a being, collective being. It's you cannot separate them, as in you cannot truly separate them. All right. So this, you know, this this cause and effect. In the end of the day, it's about what, who really benefits, who really harms from this. If you understand you really harm from this, you will never ever dare to frame other people, right? You're willing to take the punishment, no matter how bad it is, because it, you pay off the debt at that very moment. Instead of, it's very hard to get this in, even for myself, but we still need to learn that, you know, if we, you know, if we are, if we're withholding that punishment or withholding the consequences that we're supposed to have at that time, the, the effect is you're going to have even serious consequences that you will have to pay at a higher cost in future. Just like, I don't know, when you borrow people's money, the interest rate incur, you get worse and worse if you go in a rear, which is you don't pay in time. And the cost will be bigger. It will affect more people. It will be more severe, all right? Using that understanding, just suggesting, because uh, uh, you can understand why in history something happened, something so sad, statistic, so bad happening. We're not saying that we, it's, it's for, wrong is wrong, doesn't matter if it's karma or not karma, all right? That does not take away the right and wrong and evil and, you know, the, the, the standards, all right? But what we can understand is we can start to understand why, you know, this happens. You know, why this group of people get persecuted in such a way. We're not saying that oh, they should be. They are innocent as far as we can see. But we also can understand there might be an element of um, 
you know, past that involved in it. Hence, be more cautious in our action. Do not inflict the same kind of um, negative thing on others. Like, you know, this kind of blaming your own mistake towards others, shifting your mistake towards others. Because in, in the future, you have to pay back. All debt must be paid as another tenant in karma. It's illustrated by Buddha himself. He has to pay all the bad karma he has to. Obviously, he's unaffected because he's enlightened. That means he's not affected by the stimuli. He's not affected when you chop him or anything. But if you do that, obviously, you will be affected because you're still attached to it. He's not attached to it. He He's like a, maybe a controller behind the, con, behind the character. You can do whatever to him. He does not affect it. But we will be affected because we are still not awakened to the controller, which is our true self. So, so bringing it back to our real life, uh, no matter what happens, if we own up to it or work ourselves to own up to it, try to say, you know, at the very least, do not blame on others in the context of this sentence. At the very least, do not shift on other people, right? If you're not having, if you feel like, oh, I can't say it, but, um, but not putting on others is the first step. Do no harm to other people, especially people who are innocent, which just happen to be there. All right. And yeah. And the second one is to keep potent medical cures and healthcare techniques secret from public. So hiding a cure for cancer from public, obviously, you know, who would do that? Um, but um, the fact that it was mentioned here means that, you know, some people might um, thinking, you know, I have this elixir or whatever, or I have this really good formula for ailing, for elevating the, you know, whatever pain and suffer, uh, you see, you have to suffer in, in body or mind. And so, you know, hiding it for the purpose of, so we analyze why, why do you, why do we hide? Why do we yong se fang su? Why do we hide this? Profits, right? We want to get more profits, so we make it less accessible to the public. Does that mean that we should not do any profit? If we if we say that in a nowadays society, in a practical way, is it possible? It's very hard, isn't it? So what can we do? What the what's the middle ground? All right, what's the kind of mindset we can cultivate, especially people in the profession, it's everyday people, right? In the in this um, healthcare profession, maybe if you actually invented a certain or discover or invent a certain cure or techniques. Maybe you can patent it. That's fine. That's fair, right? You claim the credits, the merits, right? If you don't, that's fine. I mean, it's even bigger. It's even better. But we can't expect that from everyone. I like the word. Hero is always from the domain of individuality, not the group, All right? That means for a person to be a hero, the person to be really good, really excel, above and beyond. It's always a certain special individuals rather than expecting the whole group is like that. So what we can expect from the common everyday situation is you can patent it, but you don't have to charge 300% markup for the cure. Make it very cheap and accessible. You can make it 1% above, 2% above. Even in ancient Chinese, we say the formula of getting you know, wealth is you do not charge above three percent. I forgot. You cannot have that kind of excessive profit. It's not saying not profit, not excessive profit. If you do not pursue profit and purely help others, even better for you, better merit for you. But in the day-to-day -day situation, you can have profit, but don't charge excessively. Be reasonable. Make it accessible. Government will always come in. I mean, any. I mean, government with ability to, with, with, with sufficient resource, they will also subsidize the medicine, All right. work with them. So even as a private sector, you know, these are this the mindset they can cultivate by anyone, right? especially people who are really smart or who, re, who have a lot of resource. Right? How rich can you be richer? You know, how, if you already have that ability to create this, right? maybe you're already in a, in a very well lofty position, all right. It's just a matter of getting richer. It's not a matter of surviving or not able to have a good lifestyle. It's just a matter of what how lavish your lifestyle is. So 
if we have that mindset, right? I don't. I'm not. I'm not talking about the system or anything. Those things is already been explored by many people. I'm talking about the mindset of the people, everyday mindset that we can cultivate. Is if you're in a position, privileged position of giving out this cure and you know having that you know position to discover the cure with the resources given by the company and the government, then it is just natural for us to give it out. Make it is as accessible as possible, right? Maybe like free for the people with proven income under this much. So what I'm trying to say is those are practical, very you know day-to-day -day steps that can be done, um, and 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 it doesn't have to be, you know, all for nothing, all or nothing. It doesn't have to be so extreme. Like you give out everything, and 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 you know everything belongs to the government. You can claim that credit, but you also can not charge excessive, exuberant prices for that. Um, and and the mindset of the public should always support towards the common good rather than encouraging excessive private, um, excessive profit, especially in the domain of health. All right, which I can see a few few policy in the world that actually charge exuberant price for healthcare, which is not good. It's supposed to be in the domain of public common good, not in the domain of profit. Leave that for stock markets. Leave that for whatever. All right. All right. So that's the two big topic I have talked about. Um, sorry for like, you know, there's a lot of, um, this is a bit heavy on the concept and principle rather than examples. Do you guys have anything else to share about you know this kind of uh, situations or uh, your own experience if you're comfortable sharing it? So we'll open up for, for this discussion. Ah, me, to, fo, ah, me, to, fo, ah, me, to, fo, ah, me, to, fo, ah, me, to, fo. A mi to fo 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 May the merits and virtue accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their enlightened mind to vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo, Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs>